What if there were creatures living within our atmosphere that fit the criteria for life but was unlike anything that you've ever, ever seen before? What if floating above our heads right now was an entire ecosystem of conscious energy interfering with planes and satellites, siphoning off electricity that it would then use for fuel? What if there were pure energy beings that have been caught on camera? that have been seen by astronauts and pilots. Beings that science has finally discovered the existence of. These creatures are called plasmoids, and they could completely change science as we know it. Yo guys, I'm the Rat Man, and today we're gonna be delving into the secrets of unidentified aerial phenomena, UFO sightings, hallucinations, and plasmoids. In October of 2024, my favorite month, an article was published by Ron Gabriel Joseph and many colleagues. This article is titled, Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, Extraterrestrial Life, Plasmoids, Shapeshifters, Replicons, Thunderstorms, Lightning, Hallucinations, Aircraft Disasters, Ocean Sightings. I will leave links to all of my sources in the description of this video if you're interested in delving into further research on your own. You might also already be able to tell, but this video is probably going to have quite a bit of science lingo inside of it. But don't worry, just hang in there with me because I'm going to be breaking it down piece by piece. We're just going to be going over the light stuff and I will break it down into my Midwestern slang for you. There is an abstract about this article, which is what we're going to be going over. If you don't know, the an abstract of an article is basically like the TLDR. It's just going over a quick overview of the thing. I'm going to be reading part of that abstract and then break some of it down. So. Quote, as documented by NASA, space shuttle films, and detailed in this report, self-illuminating, pulsating, plasma-like UAP slash UFO plasmoids have multiple shapes and sizes, are attracted to electromagnetic activity, and travel at different velocities from different directions, making 90 to 180 degree turns, as well as colliding, intersecting, and piercing other plasma. Alright, so we got the first breakdown. So these plasmoid entity things create their own light source from their bodies so they can glow. They come in different shapes and sizes. They're attracted by electricity. They can collide with each other, turn any direction just like on a dime and accelerate at very high speeds, like basically instantly. Uh, they can pierce each other and they can split into littler baby plasmas some interesting stuff there okay we can create plasmas in a lab we've been doing it since the 1960s ish i think uh nasa's tried to make thrusters out of them because they would be like insanely good thrusters if we can figure it out so as far as we know so far these things aren't living creatures but we're gonna go into some different reasons for them to be so as we can see already they can multiply they can move on their own, and they seem to attack other plasmoids within the atmosphere. So these things that we thought previously was just a weird physical phenomenon like lightning or fire is now moving around, multiplying, and hunting each other down. It's, that would be like a lightning bolt just deciding to hunt down another lightning bolt and take its energy. Like, that's weird. Quote, they have been filmed by U.S. Navy personnel and U.S. Customs and Border Protection, DHC-8, which is a plane by the way, flying above and diving or sinking beneath the ocean, and by NASA following, circling, and hovering near the space shuttles, satellites, and the International Space Station, and congregating above and descending into thunderstorms in the lower atmosphere, which is the air corridor favored by commercial and military aircraft. This may account for reports of UAPs following, harassing, chasing, and toying with aircraft. Alright, listen, I got you. So, plasmoids have been filmed flying above the ocean and diving into it by multiple people within the US Navy and by a plane from the US Border Protection. They've also been filmed by NASA, where they like to buzz around satellites and the International Space Station. And they've been filmed catching the zoomies and just absolutely blasting into a thunderstorm, 
presumably to charge up on the static charge that is just laying dormant within the clouds. Because, you know, lightning happens because static charge in the cloud, negative charge on Earth, they need to connect, and poof, lightning bolt hits. So the positive charge up here in the clouds, the plasmoids are just like, mm, give me some of that and they get up in the clouds and they take the positive charge which is also presumably why they turn into ball lightning because now they're extremely positively charged they set off some sort of reaction and like absorb the lightning and <laughs> plasmas also have explosive properties they negatively affect electronics and mental activity possibly inducing hallucinations of alien abductions they can pass through glass plastic, metal, and enter the cockpits of airplanes and have been observed by astronauts inside of spacecraft. I feel like that paragraph does not really need to be broken down, but I will just say I didn't realize that these things had explosive properties until reading this article. Like, like I've read a lot about these from different articles. I have never heard about the explosive properties, that's hilarious. And then we also need to take note of them being able to mess with humans' mental activities, possibly causing them to hallucinate alien abductions or similar hallucinations. That's very weird, just take note of it. It is hypothesized that given their propensity to collide, plasmoids may be responsible for at least some unexplained inexplicable aircraft disasters. Thunder lightning storms are the main drivers of Earth's global electric circuit and direct positive currents into the ionosphere, which by the way is my favorite layer of the atmosphere. I freaking love the ionosphere guys, it's just, it's cool, it's got a cool name. I think that's where the northern lights happen and stuff, it's just cool dude. Those positive currents attract plasmas. The troposphere also has a positive charge, and the ocean surface under white water and turbulent conditions develops a positive charge. That's why they dive into the ocean in rough waters. We hypothesize that this accounts for sightings of unidentified aerial phenomena in the lower atmosphere and soaring above and diving into the oceans, including as reported here, shape-shifting UAP replicons that split into or generate additional shape-shifting UAPs as filmed by NASA and US Customs. So this is the spot where they tell us that, hey, these plasmoids appear to eat positive charged electricity and we think they dive headlong into clouds and rough seas because both of these environments are equivalent to a Mexican buffet on a Sunday in Midwest America. That logically makes sense because if these things need electricity, then they die without electricity, so they're gonna go to where electricity is if they can think. Living things go to the place where they need to go to survive. Non-living things don't do that. So this is just another thing that points to these being actual living creatures and not just weird phenomena. Plasmoids appear to purposefully interact and engage in complex behaviors, and it is suspected that they are sentient and represent a fourth domain of life. Although plasmas in the lower atmosphere may be responsible for the UAP sightings over the centuries, including those that appear to battle over cities or follow and harass military ships and planes, plasmoids cannot account for all UAPs, which may include extraterrestrial spacecraft from other worlds, or the US military. That is the last paragraph in the TLDR there for us, and it goes out with a bang, doesn't it? Right out saying that plasmoids appear to create an entirely new domain of life and that they explain most UFO sightings that humans witness. So, if you were keeping up, I know that you have questions and let me just say, yes, the Milky Way galaxy is a giant living plasmoid. No, actually, it might be because we found out about spiral plasmoids, which is a whole nother ball game that I will have to get into on a second plasmoid video. If you guys want to see one, hit like right now. So let's get into some more just general stuff. How do we know that these things exist? All right, look at this. This is a plasmoid made in a lab like I was talking about earlier. We've been making plasmoids in labs since at least 1956, when the term plasmoid was coined by Winston H. Bostick. And like I said, NASA even has some experimental thruster designs that use plasmoids to go, which is just insanely cool. I would, I would love to be an astrobiologist slash space physicist that gets to make something like that. Like, that sounds so sick, dude. Okay, now, 
Here's some plasmoid footage taken by NASA or military personnel. Alright, so plasmoids definitely exist. That is now out of the way. We know for a fact plasmoids exist. And all the evidence that I've given you so far is saying that these things are actually living creatures by the way that we have seen them to operate. Remember when I said take note of uh, the hallucinations and stuff that they seem to cause people? Because that just seems like a total like, where the heck does that come from? We've got these entities that appear to actually live and float around the atmosphere. They just do all this normal animal stuff. They're just really weird animals, apparently, that are not made of, like, solid physical material like everybody, like everything else is. Where the frick did the hallucinations come in? This actually makes sense. This makes sense, okay? Quote, Plasmoids appear to be electromagnetic entities that emit electric charges. Proximity to plasmoids, described as ball lightning, have been reported to cause damage to electrical systems, television sets, telephones, junction boxes, and electrical circuits, and they knock out power stations, presumably due to the radiation, radiation, radiation of electromagnetic fields. Christopher Mellon stated that UAP are capable of emitting radiation within the 1 to 3 and 8 to 12 gigahertz range. And they have rendered segments of our nuclear deterrent inoperable. D dude, so plasmoids have been described as ball lightning first off, so now it's confirmed. We know what ball lightning is, and they have the power to like just disable nuclear deterrent systems because they have such a strong electromagnetic field in other recent cases they're jamming radars on fighter aircraft russian pilots and ground crews have reported similar experiences including cases where the aircraft's electronic equipment fails and where ball-shaped uap have interfered with the operation of radio equipment and affect the human psyche including inducing vivid hallucinations of humanoid-like forms arnold no last name in this for some reason, who inadvertently coined the term flying saucer in 1947, reported that he also felt his mind was affected by these pulsating forms that he believed might be reading his thoughts. Arnold was an interesting guy, okay? He, he coined the term flying saucer. He's cool. I've read some stuff about him. So plasmoids give off a very intense electric radiation and electromagnetic fields, okay? So why would that make hallucinations in people? The brain is a very complicated and delicate system that runs on electricity. We have like neurons and they fire with electricity. Our muscles use electricity the same way our brain does. Our bodies work on electricity. So when we have these fields interacting with our brain, they can whack everything up and make us hallucinate. Alrighty, that is gonna do it for this video guys. That was just a very pretty basic introduction to plasmoids. I am freaking obsessed with these. If you've seen Wendigoon and you know how he is about giants, that's currently how I am about plasmoids. Because these things are real. They blow your mind because what the frick is this? Like, why is nobody talking about plasmoids right now? It's kind of insane to me. And they, they scale up. Like, when I said that the Milky Way might be a giant plasmoid, that wasn't just me saying stuff. No, no. Like, in labs, we have created seemingly living plasmoids that take shape of spiral galaxies. Spiral galaxies are primarily made up of plasma that's insane so our galaxy might be a living entity apparently what the further you go with this the more insane it gets there's a lot more information than what i gave i just gave a basic overview there are like normal plasmas and plasmoids that are not conscious the conscious ones usually are dusty plasmoids which have to do with their molecular structure there's a whole bunch of more complicated stuff that I'd love to get into in another video. If you guys are interested in that, uh, hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. If not, just tell me in the comments, yo, this was enough. I don't need you to go into the science-y rants on it, but I do love science. And I feel like there's not enough science nerds in the cryptid field, so that's kind of what I'm trying to 
trying to do just a little bit, you know. We are trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of 2025, the year of our Lord. If you would like to join us in that adventure, make sure to hit subscribe. If you hit that bell, you'll get notified whenever I release another video. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Being a YouTuber is like my dream. I'm trying really hard at it, and I want to give good content to you guys, and then you guys help me to achieve my dream, you know. Feels like a good action going on here, you know. If you got any other video ideas that you would like to see done, uh, leave them in the comments. I do read the comments and check everything out, especially because I'm so small right now, I don't really get any comments anyways, so you know. You could be the first one to comment. Alright, I think that is gonna do it, guys, so I'm just gonna say, Ratman, out. Thank you.